Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. The Black Phone, new movie out now on streaming, a movie that apparently came out last year. I, it feels like this movie came out a few months ago. Either way, it just hit streaming. I finally got a chance to watch it. This is a horror film uh, directed by Scott Derrickson. A uh, pretty simple horror film set in, I believe, the 80s. I don't think it specifically says the the time it exists, but it is far before cell phones, kind of that latchkey kid generation uh, of kids. And, uh, you know, a lot of this movie is kids, which I love the kids in this. You deal with bullies, pretty harsh bullying, fights, things like that. And then there's a kidnapper on the loose, right? Which was a huge fear in the 80s. Like, there was a massive a pretty trendy fear that everybody had that kids were be being kidnapped left and right uh, i guess that fear has kind of come back and they label it uh trafficking they they're trafficking kids um which in reality usually when kids get kidnapped it's by somebody they know like a family member but regardless it takes place in that has that kind of a vibe uh, and I absolutely love these kids. Finney is kind of our main character who ends up getting kidnapped. His sister, Gwen, is my favorite character in this movie. She has, uh, she is a shit talker. She doesn't care to get into a rumble. Uh, there's a fight where she uses a rock, which is pretty brutal. Uh, it, it's, it's, I absolutely love that character. And both of these characters seem to have special abilities. Uh, and it's, it's kind of referenced that their mom also had these kinds of abilities, but was thought of these abilities were kind of labeled as being mentally disturbed, like having schizophrenia or whatever, uh, which is kind of similar to, I want to say undone the Amazon prime series kind of, there's uh, special f abilities that, that, uh, the characters in that have to like, see have visions uh to kind of have the ability to s speak to the dead in some instances uh so both of these characters kind of have different but similar abilities like they're able to access these abilities in different ways um overall it's interesting it's an interesting horror story with a, a supernatural turn to it uh, there's aspects of the movie that I didn't necessarily like. Uh, there's a brother character in this uh, that just doesn't make any sense. Like, his involvement is, like, baffling uh, how I'm supposed to just believe uh, that's happening. But a lot of it is, you know, this kid getting kidnapped and then trying to him trying to get out as well as people trying to find him. Uh, and I enjoyed it. I liked it. And uh, I'm going to be spoiling. I dropped a few kind of minor spoilers uh, with the kids that are involved as far as their abilities. But other than that, I'm going to be spoiling this movie uh, as I talk about it. But I would recommend it. I think it's streaming on Peacock currently. And uh, it's a good, like, independent. I don't know if it, it's not like a big budget. The, I mean, the biggest actor is Ethan Hawke, who plays the bad guy, plays the grabber. Uh, some cool masks as well uh, with different facial expressions. It's like a two-piece mask, so like the top part comes off, the jaw part comes off. It's like, uh, it's cool. Which, you know, one of the aspects of horror films is the mask designs. You know, uh, the Purge series is well known for having a plethora of unique styles of masks. Uh, and of course, you know, of course, the the classic masks like uh, Friday the 13th or Halloween uh, classic masks as well. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I think it could have had some some aspects of it are, you know, a little weak, you know, but it's I don't know. It was a fun ride. I enjoyed the performances. I enjoyed the story. I thought it was unique. I thought it was interesting. And uh, let's get into it. Uh, so, yeah, so this kid, Finney, 
ends up getting kidnapped. Like, kids have been going missing, missing posters. He's having problems in school where he's getting bullied. Uh, one of his friends, who's uh, Hispanic, is kind of steps in and, and helps him out. And that friend ends up getting kidnapped. Uh, his sister, Gwen, has, like, these dreams that are, like, visions uh, where she's starting to see things. Her dad, their parent, both Finn and Gwen's dad, is an alcoholic, abusive. Uh, there is a brutal scene where he's beating her with a belt in the kitchen. Her performance is amazing. Like, you want to talk about an authentic, like, crying child being beaten performance. And this was a time where, I mean, maybe not to the extent these kids were beaten, but child abuse for a long time was an acceptable, like, tactic for keeping your kids in line uh, i think nowadays we realize how traumatic that is for kids and you're really doing long-term damage uh more than any kind of short-term uh thing but you know he plays that kind of typical uh like he's an alcoholic but also he's very strict about the movies his kids watch like uh finney isn't allowed to watch rated r movies uh, so he has to, like, when his dad passes out, he stays up late and watches movies on TV, which I'm sure aren't rated R. But it's kind of a weird thing. Usually kids that grow up with parents who are kind of too busy drinking don't always really care about what their kids watch. Uh, but, you know, I guess that's probably not true. There's probably some a lot of contradictions involved with a parent that drinks heavily and beats their kids. But, uh kind of a weird thing where he's not able to watch rated r movies uh which is kind of you know a fun aspect to finney's character as well as his relationship with the the his friend that gets in fights for him you know obviously his friend is able to watch the rated r movies and they try to have conversations about it but finney can't um but the scene where he stays up late to watch like a horror movie eating ice cream like that's a, a classic kind of aspect of that age when you had like one TV in the house, you know, and you had to stay up late and you sneak and watch the inappropriate uh, stuff, you know, whether it's like horror movies or maybe you're like trying to watch the spice channel but it's all wavy lines and stuff but you have to sneak sneak around to watch that kind of stuff as well as like eating junk food like ice cream my, my childhood growing up my mom would go out of town a lot only child i had a friend that would come over on the weekends if my mom went out of town and we were like good kids we didn't cause trouble we didn't like throw parties or but she, we'd always rent like a bunch of vhs movies from blockbuster or whatever the video store we would get a bunch of junk food and we would stay up late eating junk food watching horror movies watching action movies like jean-claude van damme and playing video games like that was like such a staple of a, a big chunk of my childhood uh so watching finn stay up to watch the horror movie was was uh, uh a nice little like, it fleshes out the characters nice. Like, obviously relatable and stuff like that. But I actually absolutely love the, the Gwen. I think she's badass. She's got a... She used the term fart knocker, which is <laughs> not a not an insult. You really hear much any any anymore, but amazing. She's, like, has no problems talking back. Uh, and, uh, you know, she's she's cool. And she's trying to help her brother. Her brother ends up getting kidnapped. And he gets put in this room that's pretty bare bones. Like there's a mattress on the floor, the black phone on the wall that's not plugged into anything, and then a toilet in a basement. And he starts getting calls on this black phone that's not plugged into anything. And he speaks to the other kids that were kidnapped by the grabber. So that's like his special abilities, right? He's able to, for some reason, communicate with these kids through. And maybe that's like 
the movie is trying to communicate like these kids get these abilities from trauma and maybe his sister has received more trauma out of the two of them that's why she is getting she's already had her abilities and then finn is only just now in a traumatic event and he's getting these maybe i don't know if the movie's necessarily trying to say that let's take a little break from the show to promote i have inspired disorder plus would you feel good about donating five dollars a month to an artist that you want to support five dollars a month is not much less than a price of a cup of coffee at starbucks a lot of people would probably say yeah inspire disorder plus people can go and for five dollars a month or fifty dollars for the year you get access to all of the old podcasts that i've ever done like 10 different podcasts hundreds of podcast episodes you also get access to like special deals so if you do want to collect my artwork you get discounts on stuff watch this show binge the full week ad free for five dollars a month like you get benefits for the five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year so it's not like you're just donating five dollars there's something you get something for that would you feel good about donating five dollars a month to an artist that you want to support a lot of people would probably say yeah head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus and become an inspired disorder plus member today and now let's get back to the show but they have powers, so he's ca- talking to these people on the phone that are assumably dead. These kids that have already been kidnapped by the grabber. And they're, like, giving him, like, clues. There's, like, a mystery kind of clue, kind of almost like setting up a mousetrap kind of uh, situation where each time he talks to somebody different, they give him another piece of advice, another thing to potentially do and set up in the basement to try and get out of there. And each attempt is like a failed attempt, like to dig out from underneath the thing to try and get out of the window. Like there's there's different there's different attempts and different things that these people are trying to get them to do that were in that room at one point as well. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting. It gets like it gets you gets you sucked in a little bit. Uh, and you know when it all comes together at the end of the film. Where like the mouse trap is set and put in motion, it's pretty. It's pretty like you know. It feels good. It's pretty satisfying to see it all kind of come together. To see it work, you know. Out of all the kids who failed, they kind of there's that com- camaraderie they have through these phone calls, and of course Finney knows all their names because they've all been in the newspaper. They don't know who they are. Like, it's interesting. Like, there's a lot of aspects of this movie that it feels like could have been fleshed out more. But it's okay. I I think it's fine regardless. The thing, the aspect of this movie that really bothered me. Bothered me more than the fact that the alcoholic dad who beats his kids doesn't want them to watch rated R movies. Way more than that. There is a a character, like the cops are are obviously investigating. They go to a house, and they go in this house, and this guy is there, and he's like a conspiracy theorist guy. He apparently came to town to find the grabber himself. He's got, like, the pin board with all the yarn and all that kind of stuff, which ends up like the cops don't want to have to deal with that guy, but they assume he has nothing to do with it. But that guy ends up being the brother of the grabber and has no idea his brother is the grabber. Like, this guy is so obsessed with trying to find the person who is his brother that he doesn't even know. It's the dumbest thing. He's in the same house that apparently, even when his brother is gone to work, Right? The grabber has a day job, goes to work, and the other brother that's there that's obsessed with trying to find his what is his brother, he's trying to find the grabber, at no point goes around the house just to look around to check out your brother's home and stumble upon a basement. Like If I had a friend or a relative and I was obsessed with a thing, or for whatever reason, I'm going to stay at their house 
and I'm there alone, and they're gone, I'm going to, like, check the house out. I want to see what my my bro's house, what it's like, especially if there's a basement. It's like, well, what, what does this basement look like? There's not a lot of basements in the desert. So, I'm, you know, basements are interesting. They could be, there's a wide range of things a basement could be. And at no point does this brother check it out. At no point does he even open the door to where the basement is. Because even the door of the basement is like this giant metal door. And if you'd just seen that, it would have been like, that's weird. Why is there a giant metal door? Like, he's so inquisitive that he would relocate to try and solve these kidnappings. He's like such an investigator. But at no point does he try to even like casually check out his brother's pad. And if he had, because the one moment he does, he finds out that Finn is downstairs. Which leads to a brutal kill. Right? It's a cool kill where the grabber kills his brother. Pretty cool. Axe to the head. Looked cool. But the brother character aside from being stupid, does nothing positive for this story. Like, there is, he shouldn't have even been there. Aside from that cool kill, like, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Makes zero sense why that brother is involved in this movie at all. Why he was written in. Maybe there's a different version of the story where it makes mildly more sense. But there's no, like, the zero does not make any sense whatsoever. Does not make any sense whatsoever. He had to have known there was a basement. And at no point he checks it out, right? Doing lines of blow, hanging out, getting bored. Let's check out my brother's house. Let's see what he's got in the basement. You know? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And it's like the reveal that his brother... Because the cops show up and it's like, oh, this guy. And then we like find out that he's a brother. And it's like, what? Your brother's there? Like, your brother's there while the grabber likes to sit in the kitchen waiting for the kid in the basement to come out of the basement so that he can punish the kid. And it not, not at all worried about his brother seeing that, him, his, his brother sitting in the kitchen with a mask on shirtless with a belt in his hand like has zero never noticed that whatsoever and then there's like a dog out of nowhere as well the the whole brother thing doesn't make any sense whatsoever uh, it's like sad it is sad let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces that's right i am also an artist I do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces. A new face, a new painting gets released every single day over at InspiredDisorder.com. So head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com, buy original art, Buy prints if that's your jam, if you want 8x10 prints on high quality paper. Also, if you're looking to wear some art, there are shirts available with original artwork by myself. Select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form. You go to InspiredDisorder.com, you buy original artwork, you buy prints, you buy shirts, you're supporting an artist directly and if you're the type of person that likes to invest in nfts there are also nfts available for select faces go to inspireddisorder.com now and now let's get back to the show uh there's also an aspect of the end that is kind of like just felt like lazy like they put it in i don't know the end where it's like the cops for whatever reason believe gwen they believe that her visions are legit. And they listen to her about, oh, she had a dream. He's in this house. Cops break into the house. No warrant. No other than Gwen saying that it's that house. No, and the fact that they had been there already. Like, that's the house where the conspiracy theory guy was. They br or, No, it wasn't that house. 
actually. It wasn't even the brother house. It was just a house across the street from that guy. They break into the house, find nothing, right? You, when you're watching the movie, it seems like, oh, they're breaking in. They're going to find Finn. Meanwhile, Finn's, like, trying to get out, right? The trap had been sprung. You beat him up with the phone, fed the dog the steak, like all the little bits of his conversations with his phone bros came together for this master plan to work to get out of there. And so he's trying to get out, knows the, the lock, the, the password already to get out. And there's like a head fake where it's like, oh, they were breaking into the wrong house, which they had no problem breaking into, which actually is kind of true for cops. Like, I'm sure cops, given any opportunity to break into a home, they kind of seem like as long as they might be able to shoot somebody while they're in their bed sleeping, it, it doesn't seem like cops are too, uh, not, you know, too uh, opposed to that idea. So I guess that doesn't it's not that crazy that the cops would have no problem breaking into a home. But they break in, they go into the basement, and they see the mounds of dirt. And they immediately assume, oh, that's where the, those kids are buried. I mean, obviously it looks like they're, they're graves. Because the mounds of dirt, there's like, you know, five of them or whatever for the five kids that have been kidnapped. But it's a big head fake that, you know, and it's like... Okay, like just logistically, if I'm to make this stuff make more sense, maybe the brother lives in the house where the graves are. Maybe both brothers live in the house where the... Why would you live in the same... I mean, why would you sleep in the same house as a kid that's been kidnapped when you live across the street from it? Like, or at least put your brother up at that house. I don't know, but it's a, it's kind of a fun head fake where it's like, oh, it's not. And then they come outside and we realize, oh, they're across the street from each other. But this one dude owned both homes, but which like, I don't know how you afford both homes is this like kidnapper is apparently like a magician. Like that was kind of his shtick to kind of lure kids. I mean, homes, probably a lot cheaper back then, but for a magician to just buy two homes, like, how does he buy two homes? It's not like he's getting ransom money from these kids, which would make sense. So maybe use the ransom money. He's not doing, he's not asking for ransom. He just wants to torture these kids and then kill them for some reason. So I don't know, those, those aspects of the movie... The brother character doesn't make any sense. The head fake at the end was like, okay, and the cops just automatically, this is definitely where those, bo I mean, I guess you could assume that's probably it. Like that would make sense in some way, but it just feels like very easy, I guess you could say. But other than that, I, th I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was interesting. Uh, they could have maybe maybe you know delved into like the supernatural aspect of why these kids have like set up something like oh there's stories of the mom that would have visions or whatever i don't know uh they're like it's it's like an 75 80 percent good movie and it could have been better like there's a lot of the aspects are amazing the way the kids act the fight the bully fight scenes are cool the relationships between the kids are cool the aesthetic, uh, the time frame, everything is pretty awesome. And this could have been like a home run. If not for a couple things that are like, what? What? What is that brother doing? Why is he even in this movie? It like actively makes the movie worse. Because it doesn't make any sense why he's there. It doesn't make any sense he wouldn't know that his brother is keeping a kid hostage down down the basement anyway uh overall i thought it was fun not the greatest horror movie it didn't like blow me away it wasn't it wasn't like elevated to a point but i thought it was fun 
I like the aspects, different aspects of it, uh, all the different kids and all that kind of stuff. I thought a lot of it was really fun and then just a few negative aspects. But if you want to check it out, currently it's on Peacock, uh, The Black Phone. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.